the leopard. No, we're not going to show you a leopard. I'm going to show you Scar. I just have to try and turn around. He's actually got up now and he's coming straight towards us. Come on, car. Oh, he's so beautiful. Quickly, go, car, go. That is an unbelievable looking lion. He's got a bit of a limp though. And I can hear the other males calling in the distance down below us. Now, I've heard a couple of stories from a variety of guides in the area. Uh, the other day, apparently this young male that we saw, I suspect that it's the same male, was trying to kill some cubs that a lioness had. They were quite very, very young cubs. And I don't, they don't know if, she, if that young male was successful or not, but it would make sense why there is so much vocalizing going on at the moment. Obviously, they don't want to tolerate this. The musketeers, they're still in the area. Sure, look at that. He's beautiful, this cat. Wow. That is a truly magnificent lion. Now, I don't know why he, he's, he's got a limp. I know that he, I heard that he broke his leg a few years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Was it last year? I wonder if it's still not because of that. Of course, I've never seen this lion before. This is the first time I'm actually having a decent view of him. But now we need to try and get around the car so that we can also have a view again. I'm going to try and do some maneuvering here. And we've been so patient by waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for this lion to get up. I don't know. He's walking down the road now. I think he's going back to where the roars were coming from. I think that's exactly what's happening. So that must be it. So that, that limp must be from when he broke his, his leg from, from what I understand. I'm not exactly sure what happened. But he's looking in fantastic condition. He definitely doesn't look underweight. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to move forward. You can see there are loads of cars coming into the area now. Of course, when when you hear that Scar is about, everybody flocks, and I don't blame them. I've also wanted to do exactly the same thing. Off he goes. Hmm, I wonder which route he's going to take. We'll just have to sit and watch for now. There he stops again. Like I said, I went exploring down in the open plains below, and I couldn't find his brothers all the rest of the coalition members. They're in there somewhere though. Maybe he's going to lead us straight towards them. That's of course would be the best plan. I really hope that that is the case because I'd love to sit and learn more about this iconic lion of Kenya. He is absolutely beautiful. I mean, I'm sure there's people that come here every single year purely to see this lion and no others. Now he's not He's old. I mean, he's not a young, fresh lion. He's not like a Birmingham. Um, he must be about, what, nine or ten years old, somewhere around there. That's what he sort of looks like. So he's in, in the prime of his life. He won't get too much bigger than this. This is, this is really it. But now the problem lies with all the younger males coming in, especially if you've got a, an injury. Now, Kelly, you're wondering if they would intervene to fix his leg. I'm not sure of the of the what they do here. Obviously, in the Sabi Sand, we don't intervene unless it's because because of human interference. However, I did read a while ago uh, that they they came in and they did some sort of veterinary work on him. I'm not sure exactly for what procedure. That was a couple of years ago, I think in 2013 or so. So it seems as though they they do help. I don't like I said. I'm not sure exactly what the protocol is here. If it's if it's because of human interference, I would imagine that they would intervene and assist like we do in South Africa in the Sabi Sand. Uh, if, if it's maybe natural causes, I would imagine that they would let nature take its course. It's very important that we don't intervene too much. But again, uh, it's a different area. I'm not sure exactly of the protocol here. I mean, he's moving quite a way around. Let's see if he's going to follow up on those rules that we've been hearing. Okay, well, let's jump. Let's go ahead then. Try and jump in front of the cars. What we'll do is we'll have one more look at him and then we're gonna move off. There are lots and lots of cars around here. I know everyone's excited to, of course, see him. 
Now, Joe, you're wondering how long do lions live for? Uh, well, it depends on if it's a male or female. Females tend to live a little bit longer, normally around 14, 15 years old. They can even get older than that. I've seen a lion live to 16, 17 years old. Males, however, normally about 12 years old, uh, sometimes even younger than that as well. Imagine it's a very tough life for them. They're constantly moving. They're constantly trying to defend territories from young upstarts that are coming into the area and are trying to, you know, take obviously the best spots where the best source of water is, where the the best source of food will be. All these different types of things. And I think these these four fellas have done well uh, to sort of protect this area but I just don't know which lioness was the lioness that unfortunately uh, had the cubs that were being harassed by that younger male right we'll try and get around him obviously we want to give him a bit of space I'm going to send you across to James who's got a wildebeest herd in the meantime